Hello and welcome to the Toledo Lucas County Public Library's Sight and Sound Video Archive Series. I'm Tom Walton. Today we sit down with a man whose name, whose face, whose music is known to generations of Toledoans. In fact, Sam Zor is known as Toledo's Mr. Music. That's because for nearly six decades he's been the creative force and conductor of the popular summer musical series Music Under the Stars at the Toledo Zoo Amphitheater. And Sam, I'm a huge fan. Thanks for this opportunity today. Well, thank you, uh, You're a native Toledoan, Sam, uh, born in the teeth of the Great Depression in 1930. That's right. uh, you grew up in the Hungarian neighborhoods of East Toledo. That's right. Uh, can you talk about your earliest childhood memories during that tough economic time? Uh, actually, you didn't think about it. You just did it. You know, for example, uh, after my parents purchased a home, mm -hmm. which was gorgeous, okay, uh, they acquired some money to buy property to have a garden, which was city property, you know, 50 by 70 something uh -huh. or another. And uh, during the uh, springtime, there'd be a spade out there for me to help dig that. We didn't have a roto tiller. So we actually, Hungarians, would spade that entire garden mm -hmm. and we'd have a marvelous garden. What did your folks grow in that garden? Well, of course, importantly, parsley, petrajem, and for the soups and all. Uh -huh. And uh, then uh, you you name it, it was there, the beets and the carrots <laughs> and the potatoes and the kohlrabi. You had to make your own food in those days, didn't you? Yeah. Well, we had a grocery store, but, but we had actually a uh, uh, root cellar. Uh -huh underneath the back porch. Uh -huh. And mother would say to me in December, go out and get me six potatoes. And it was all covered out in, in, from the freezing, you know. Mm -hmm. But we had the root cellar and everything was there for us to have. Uh -huh. uh, now we didn't have the, uh, the fruit. Uh, maybe we had strawberries on occasion, mm -hmm. you know, in the garden. Yeah. But uh, the veggies we all had. Yeah. Now, your father was also a Samuel Zor. That's right. Uh, he was born in Hungary, but he was a naturalized American. Is That's that right? right. Can you tell us about your dad? Very, very quiet. Uh, his mother, well, he lost his dad, industrial accident mm -hmm. at the Interlake Iron. At, uh, I think she was 28 years old, so she was a widow then, mm -hmm. and, and came down heavy on the, on the children. And uh, so he kind of just did his job and uh, uh, didn't, couldn't work on his personality really. In fact, it was when he was 80, 83 years old, Judy, my wife, found his concertino, uh, an accordion, and, and we went up to the attic to get it, it came down, and he played the Hungarian ballads on the concertino. Oh I never knew he did that. He That's just something. covered up that sort of thing. He just did his job, and uh, we never talked about personality. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's where the musical talent came from. <laughs> well, actually, my mother was a good soprano. Mm -hmm. I remember her voice at church. And uh, uh, no, I think the the talent was kind of in, in the community. And I took lessons mm -hmm. on the saxophone. I started with the sax. And then I... Uh, went to uh, White High School right. and worked with Cecil Vashaw, a woman that was my mentor. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about Cecile in just a bit, but you had siblings. Can you talk about, uh, you had sisters? Yeah. I, Three sisters? My uh, sister Liz, uh, who moved after college mm -hmm. to the West Coast and had a family there, had two children. Yeah. And then she had a uh, cancer, mm -hmm. and she passed away early on, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. And Liz was a good musician, played the piano, uh, actually conducted the uh, 
Tridel sorority at the university, uh, had a uh, church choir. So it sounds like music was really a big part of your childhood. Yeah, but it was uh, not homegrown. I mean, uh -huh. no one stopped whatever we did, but it was the neighborhood sure. that developed that white high school with her. Now, you lived on Caledonia Street. That's right. In East Toledo. And, That's uh, right. During the Depression, but a good neighborhood to grow up in, was it? Oh, yes. It was wonderful. Everything was there. The food was great. The clothing, whatever we needed. The root cellar was there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's, Now, your first language as a child was Hungarian, wasn't it? Yeah. In fact, you know, I should be introduced as Sir Shamuel. I'll or, let you pronounce it. There yeah, you go. Yes, Sir. Will you roll the R? Very I'm never slightly. good at rolling my R's. Yeah, yeah. sir. In the, there were two umlauts over the uh -huh. O. Okay. So it was U, U sound. Your Hungarian uh, name. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure Germanized. Okay. okay. But uh, uh, did you speak any English at all as a young child? Uh, no. Uh, no. I read somewhere you knew two words, uh, airplane and, and ice, ice cream. cream. There you go. That's, I guess that's three words. <laughs> that's that's who's it. Who's counting, huh? But everything was uh, Hungarian or, or broken English uh -huh. in the home. And if I, I, I didn't speak English until I went to secondary school. You so know, how did you high. get along in, in primary, your primary years, primary grades, without, without speaking English? You just learned. I mean, you learned. And the principal at Birmingham School was an uncle, very Hungarian. So uh, we got along fine, famously. <laughs> great, great. Now, was there, Sam, was there a magic moment, uh, an epiphany, if you will, when you realized your life was going to revolve around music? When it was, was it when you got to high school? Yeah, oh, yeah. I never even thought about that in elementary school. Okay. Took private lessons on the saxophone, okay. clarinet. You were into reed instruments initially, weren't you then? Exactly. Is that exactly. what you thought you would see yourself doing, uh, sticking with it? Not really. You know, you just did it. And then I got so involved in in the reeds, in the weight band with Cecil Vanshaw. Uh -huh. And then um, to, uh, uh, well, actually in high school, uh, you know, I played in a dance band. Mm -hmm. We did all the Stan Kent things, all the... Uh, Big band sounds. Oh, yeah. Like it was uh, five saxophones, uh, two altos, two tenors, a uh, uh, bass or baritone, uh -huh. and then three trumpets or four trumpets, uh -huh. and then three trombones, and then rhythm, a uh, bass, contrabass. Mm -hmm. In piano. Do you remember your first recital? I, some Bach Conservatory, was it? You know, Music? I don't remember that. Seriously, I think I repressed that. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you mentioned, you did attend Wade High School. And of course, you were in the band. And But I was fascinated by the fact that I didn't know this about you, that you also became the drum major. That's right. How did that happen? Well, it was kind of, we were, it was based on leadership. You know, all of a sudden, I was a leader in the weight band. And, and uh, Cecil Fashaw appointed me as the uh, drum major. And I had to learn to twirl a baton and do that sort of thing and become a leader. And, uh, and you mastered the art of, of twirling? Actually, by watching... And actually, I went out and watched other drum majors, and I uh, would have clinics with them, or I would go to clinics mm -hmm. and, and just learn how to twirl the baton. Wow. Now, you were not active. You were active at weight, not only in music, but you were on a student council, I think, weren't you? Uh, uh, you really act a Actually not. I was appointed uh, uh, spokesman for a lady that ran for... Uh, uh, the president of the student council. So you were sort of a campaign manager. That, exactly. exactly. <laughs> All right. No, I mean, you're, you're laughing, but evidently I was good at it because she got afterwards we found after a, a session with the student body, and she was wonderful, a bright girl. And we could tell that 
it was could go a different direction. So then the uh, uh, Mr. Brenner uh, decided that uh, maybe I should run as a dark horse for student council president, right in candidate uh -huh. with the name Zor. There you are, Sam <laughs> Zor, and uh, I ran and uh, won as a dark horse. Well, there you go. You were. Yeah. You know, so you were in politics at an early age. Exactly. <laughs> thank, thank heavens. Yeah. yeah. Thank heavens for music and for all of us in Toledo, you got out of politics and That's stuck right. with music. You graduated from Waite uh, in 1948. 48. And uh, at some point around that time, you began studying and playing the bassoon. Yeah, well, she, uh, Cecil Vacha purchased the bassoon. She was your music uh, That's right. teacher at Waite. And decided that I was a woodwind person, clarinet and sax, that I could handle the bassoon. And I took some private lessons here in town on the bassoon. So I was kind of a beginner, but I just loved playing the bassoon. And uh, what happened is Joe Henry, a student at DeVilbus High, or no, at uh, DeVilbus, uh, decided to organize a uh, youth symphony. So I got to play, and my friend Byron West mm -hmm. played the oboe, and he, he and I would go to rehearsals with the uh, uh, youth orchestra with Joe as the conductor, mm -hmm. and that, that was my first introduction to more into concert music, doing the overtures. Well, now... Most folks in music would agree that bassoon is not an easy instrument to play. Why did it appeal to you so much? Because it was purchased and I was into the woodwinds and the instructor Cecil thought that I'd be a good person to go down that avenue, mm -hmm. you know, on the would bassoon. Would you say that uh, Cecil Vashaw, Cecil, was your most influential music teacher? Oh, One of a, them. A mentor, okay. totally. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, before you get into Michigan, uh, she asked me where I was going to go to college. Mm -hmm. And I had four years of math, four years of science, chemistry, physics, everything. Uh, not that I excelled, but I took all those things. Four years of English, English the senior year being Shakespeare at Wade High. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was prepared to go to college and become maybe an engineer, go to the University of Toledo or Bowling Green, mm -hmm. because actually, you know, I had to have a substantial background to make a living. And, you know, music was not considered. You know, I just fell into music mm -hmm. and uh, evidently did excel in that sort of thing. So she said, where are you going to college? And I says, University of Toledo or Bowling Green. She says, no, you're not. No, you're not. I'm going to call Dr. Ravelli at the University of Michigan. I says, why would you do that? She says, you should go in that direction in music. So she called Ravelli uh -huh. and set up an audition on the clarinet, saxophone, and bassoon at Mish. And he says, you're going to enroll at Michigan hmm. come September. So you ended up at the University of Michigan. In fact, yeah. I think you even got a job, didn't you, uh, with the band? Yeah, I worked in Dr. Ravelli's uh, library, which was a blessing. Uh -huh. I learned so much working with him. Uh -huh. You know, I was actually a, a friend of one of the best college band directors ever, Dr. William B. Ravelli. Now, you went on to earn your, uh, I guess, your bachelor's and your master's degrees at the University of Michigan as a classical bassoonist, is that right? That's right, that's mm -hmm. right. And I played the saxophone and clarinet in the jazz orchestras, even in Ann Arbor. Well, uh, speaking of Ann Arbor and, and Michigan, you your skills as a drum major that you acquired at Waite uh, uh, stood you in good stead when you got to Michigan, didn't they? You, you began twirling baton... At Michigan? That's right. Uh, well, I could do that. Uh, you know, already I had the skill to do that. And uh, Rivelli picked up a, uh, a baton twirler, Floyd Zierbach, who is just amazing as a twirler. And he wanted to have another fellow on the other side of the great Michigan band. And he said, I want you to audition. So I auditioned, 
and during auditions in Ferry Field, which was the sports compound up there in Ann Arbor, uh, he had me audition. I didn't want to audition, but he said, you, you must go through the procedure. So I remember doing a body wrap all the way from up in the neck down here. And down there, I did a horizontal spin up. And I was facing east, not realizing it was windy. And when it went up and it, it came down, I looked over at Floyd Zarbach, which I shouldn't have done, because when I turned back, the baton had moved toward my face. And you the, caught yourself right in the face. The with butt the came and broke my nose oh my off the skull. So I looked like a boxing champion. Had to but get apparently home. it didn't end your career as a twirler at the University of Michigan. Well, he, he needed the man on the other side. So there <laughs> I was. I see. And so I was in that spot. But incidentally, I was introduced at every home game. My junior and senior year is Sam Zor from Toledo, Ohio. There you go. And I would run through the band, through the tunnel, huh. through the band, and salute the cameras in the Michigan press box. Strutting all the while, right? That's right. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you were even a twirler at the 1951 Rose Bowl game, is that right? Well, there I was there. Well, I was part of the band. And well, that we had were, to be a thrill performing on the West Coast. And well, you know, it was <laughs> uh, it was laborious, and then I had a twirl in March eight miles in that Rose Bowl parade. Oh my goodness! And then also in the ball game, uh, the Rose Bowl game, and uh, I'm sure I did some well. In order to do, we went by train, not by plane. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I twirled in Albuquerque, New Mexico. All the way out, we would stop uh, with the band and show off the band. What a, what a trip that must have been by train oh, all the way across the country. Wonderful. I'll bet. Now, one of the uh, certainly important events that occurred for you at University of Michigan was you met a young lady who would become your wife, That's Marjorie. Right. Is that That's right? That's right. And she was a musician, too? Played the flute Played the in flute the band. In the band. So you met each other in the band. That's right. Through that connection. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, something folks may not uh, know about you is your rich baritone voice. Uh, you sang in choirs for a long time, didn't you? In high schools, uh, uh, high school and college, you sang? Yeah, that started in elementary school at the Evangelical Reformed Church. Evangelical Reformed Church. Mm -hmm. And it was a Christian church, of course. And uh, I sang in the choir, the adult choir. We didn't have a junior choir. I sang tenor in the uh, a, a marvelous choir at the uh, church. And then I got into vocal music at White High also mm -hmm. and uh, sang at churches, conducted. Uh, when I got to Michigan, I became a Phi Gamma Delta fraternity boy, mm -hmm. and uh, I had the Phi, Phi Gamma Fiji Choir, okay. which never was in the top ten <laughs> in the uh, fraternity choirs. And uh, so I took to the group. We auditioned. I got in the top ten, really? finally. And in the uh, finals, we took second place at the U of M proud of that. Let me ask you, what, uh, as you look back on all that, what gave you, what gives you the greater pleasure, the performing, such as singing or playing the bassoon, or the conducting? Actually performing then. Mm -hmm. the, the conducting happened along the way. Right. But uh, then uh, finally in secondary school, Cecil Vasha would say, I'm busy, I have to get on the telephone. Would you take the, the girls' choir? She knew what she was doing. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love her. Uh, or did. Yeah. Um, tell us about your, your children, Sam, uh, that came along over the years. Well, Tom... Uh, Your son, Tom. And he's a musician as well. Oh, yeah. He's a pianist. Very talented one. And he uh, studied with, uh, I forget who, in Toledo. 
had a, a good background in mm -hmm. classical piano. And then he went to uh, Worcester mm -hmm. College, Presbyterian College. Uh, then he uh, went to Worcester, went to Bowling Green. No, went to Michigan to satisfy Dad. He went to Mich, and he... That's two, two Zors who could have gone to Bowling Green and didn't. That's right. <laughs> and then, then he went to Bowling Green... Oh, he did eventually. Yeah. Okay. And then finally, he went to the University of Toledo and fell in love with the, the piano mm -hmm. instructor there mm -hmm. at the University of Toledo, who is still uh, one of the finest piano teachers in uh, okay. in Toledo. And the other the other kids, uh, Terry uh, went to first to Interlaken uh -huh. for secondary school, and. Uh, then went on to, uh, forget now, he went New England Conservatory okay. in Boston mm -hmm. and studied uh, trumpet up there with fine teachers. When he graduated, he was a professional trumpet player wow. okay. from uh, there. And then he won, won awards in New York City, won the number right. for brass playing, right. and, uh, and very we're... successful now in New York City as right. a trumpeter. And other children playing. Uh, that's Terry, mm -hmm. and uh, plays all the Broadway shows. Amazing. Plays uh, subs at the New York Philharmonic. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, he did this last fall, so he's a professional trumpet player okay. in New York. Sam, we talked about Terry and Tom. Uh, let's talk about your daughters, uh, Megan and Martha. They were both uh, talented uh, musicians as well? Well, they both studied piano, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't recall one of them beyond being on the violin or wind <coughs> instrument, uh, but they were very proficient at playing the piano. As a matter of fact, um, Martha decided to... Uh, go to the University of Michigan, and she auditioned on the piano for admission at the, at the University of Michigan. So I was proud of uh, sure. Martha there. And uh, then, I don't know if she played, then she went to work in New York City, and she was not a part of the musical scene as a performer but I'm sure that she was at all the concerts and all the shows, very active in music. Now, That's, did the girls take up piano at your urging, or was it just something they gravitated to on their own? Well, I, if there were any urging, it was not my dad, who was always there. He was just marvelous, but it was uh, my mother. She it was. She sort of encouraged. Uh, uh, not encouraged. You should be right. It, it, well, so did you sort of pass that through to your daughters? Uh, oh, I'm sure. <laughs> you, okay. you, you don't think they about felt it. your presence. Let's put yeah, it that you, way. You just do it. And for example, I, one of the problems that we have nowadays is that you, you say to the children, "What would you like for di lunch or dinner?" I never heard that as a kid. We always had a lunch dinner. It was there, and it was gorgeous. My mother was a fantastic <laughs> cook and baker, so it was uh, it was a part of the upbringing. Sure. Uh, well, now, it sounds obviously like your whole family was musically inclined. Is, is that, as you made a point a few moments ago, to satisfy Dad, or it was their talent there, something genetic going on? They had the talent and the aptitude. Right from the yeah, and then like. uh, the uh, thank you, and then the uh, the organizations that I belonged with. For example, Wade High School. I was with a a dance band, and it was good. We used to play at the Swingin' Canteen down downtown uh -huh. for jobs, and uh, so it was just that I got so much into it that I. Uh, Figured out I'm gonna not that I was gonna do do music in in college, mm -hmm. but I got so much into it there was no way out when mm -hmm. I got to Ann Arbor to college. 
played a dance band. In fact, we did a job with our dance band in the Upper Peninsula. If somebody would say to me, would you do a job in New York City? I'd say, you're crazy. I'm not going 800 miles mm -hmm. to play in a dance band. But we did. We actually drove up to the UP, took the ferry boat to the uh, UP, and went to, uh, e what was the university up there? And I played a fraternity party up there in uh, the Upper Peninsula. Ah. In uh, forget the university Lake now. Lake Superior? Was it, could it have been Lake Superior? No, it was no. A, a Michigan uh, okay. uh, Eastern Michigan, Western Michigan, up there. What? I'm sure they had a terrific hockey team. <laughs> I, I would imagine. Yeah, it's I'm cold sure. enough. Um, after you left uh, U of M, uh, Sam, you took a job as music teacher at Woodward High School. That's right. That right. And how did it feel to no longer be the student to suddenly be the teacher? You know, I didn't think about it. In fact, I was offered good jobs out of Mish. And the, the pressure from Kenny Howell and, and Cecil Bash, you, know, you have to come back to Toledo. And I figured, what would I do there? You know, uh, in fact, Wade High had a, a, a band director at the time, mm -hmm. and I, I couldn't vi envision my doing that at Wade. So they sort of, uh, Cecil, I think, was a superintendent, or su mm -hmm. was a, she was supervisor of music. Uh, and I decided to teach in Toledo. Mm -hmm. and, and the only school that was open was Woodward High School. And, and I figured I'll take the job. And I'll never forget when I called attendance at, at, Wade, at Woodward High School. It was Ernie Zimkevich, Eugene Wasilewski, Richard Folta, and Bob <laughs> Bell. <laughs> Bob Bell was a freshman. How in the did band. he sneak in there? <laughs> That's it. That, he was in there, and he played uh, percussion. Of course, Bob Bell, a longtime director of the Toledo Symphony. And, That's right, and a dear friend of yours for a long, long time. Oh yeah. Along about that time in 1952, uh, you became involved with something that was going to change your life forever. Uh, Toledo musical series called Music Under the Stars. Do you remember how that came about? How did that start? Do you recall well, your involvement with it? There, there was a band, and it was supported by the city of Toledo. And uh, conductor was Kenny Holland, a local musician, mm -hmm. who also was a member of the symphony, Cecil Vashaw, mm -hmm. uh, who was also a member of the symphony orchestra. And... Uh, uh, they suggested that I come and teach there, and I'm glad I did it because I had some pretty good players mm -hmm. that that had the technique to play the instruments. There, there was always a good Polish uh, trumpet player and a good <clears throat> Polish clarinet player, mm -hmm. and we had good trumpets and we had good. To, so I was gl glad to get in that environment, and. Uh, and then I went, uh, well, well, they needed another director. Kenny re re resigned mm -hmm. from the post, and I was just appointed director working through Arthur Graytop and Art Morris mm -hmm. and wonderful people there. At and the I, zoo you're speaking uh, of? Please. People at the zoo? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they were city of Toledo right. people. City owned the zoo in those that, days. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I just joined, and I had good direction there on hiring musicians. Mm -hmm. And uh, now with the symphony, I have you know a wonderful contractor there. So uh, I just got into doing it, and was very much into conducting bands. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy because, you know, I was a guest conductor all over Ohio. In fact, at one time I went to New York, conducted the famous Goldman Band exactly. I was going to ask in you about New York that. City. Mm -hmm. We went, we did a concert in uh, Brooklyn mm -hmm. at Prospect Park, went to Seaside Park in the afternoon, and they were pro professional musicians from Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, from 
New York City. That was a great honor, wasn't it? I mean, that was a very prestigious organization. Oh, yeah. And you got one rehearsal or you <laughs> receive one rehearsal with them and then you're on with yeah. the band. Yeah. And they, they were wonderful and I like that. Now, you became part of Music Under the Stars and, of course, for 58 summers you put that program together. Presently, the uh, series is on hold, on hiatus yeah. for a bit. You expect it to come back and would you expect you to be... You want to be part of that again? Huh? Is that your? Is that the whole? Get this thing going again and get back up there and conduct. Well, what happened there is uh, we were on uh, on vacation in Costa Rica, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, my wife Judy was called, and Judy is also a nurse, mm -hmm. and uh, and she said, "Well, Sam had." these problems. Well, I didn't have any problems, really. It was, the, this was the uh, verbology of a nurse. Mm -hmm. You know, I was married to Florence Nightingale, and, it, and she uh, made it look that, like, you know, I, I was having some di difficulty, and I wasn't, really. And so the sympathy people thought that I should be on hiatus, and so that I was. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we didn't have this season. But what's comical is that already I was contracted to go to Fremont to conduct the... Uh, July 4th, I believe. That's right, which I had been doing for years mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, Music Under the Stars Ensemble. And, and we drew about uh, 4,500 people there at that mm -hmm. concert. And so we're back in, in good stead with the community and all. Well, so that's good. Uh, you started doing that, as, as I mentioned, in 1952. And I want to talk about your experience at the University of Toledo as well, because 11 years later, I believe in 1963, uh, you became director of bands that's right. at the University of Toledo. And that's a job you held for a decade, for 10 years. What was that experience like for you? Well, it was rewarding in that we had college-aged musicians coming in to work with the band. And and I had already built a reputation of doing like uh, many Broadway shows mm -hmm. at Woodward. Yeah. And so I, I was part of the uh, theater department there. Mm -hmm. And we did some great shows. For example, in secondary school at uh, Woodward High School, I did a Gershwin show, Girl Crazy. We did Guys and Dolls, Bells Are Ringing, Pajama Game, Bye Bye Birdie, Music Man, and we did an opera, The Telephone, a Minotti opera. Uh, uh -huh. Billy, well, we did Billy the Kid uh, with the ballet. I had a ballet man, Bud Kerwin, who was just fantastic. And those shows were dance shows, oh, yeah. and they were beautiful. Yeah. So I had that background going to the University of Toledo. And there at the university, I became director of the bands mm -hmm. and did some of the Broadway show music on the football field. Had a great band. Just that was kind of a departure for, for marching bands on, at university level football games to do Broadway musicals, wasn't it? Uh, yes, kind of it a was, change. But I was adventuresome, and the students exactly. enjoyed it. It was educational for them, mm -hmm. and they enjoyed it very It was a good band. In fact, it was uh, written up as the miracle on Bancroft Street, <laughs> you know, by the blade. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, well, then it must be so. It was a good band. I mean, playing. Uh -huh. We had good players. We had a young man, uh, forget his name for the moment here. Well, also, I had Bud Kerwin who came and helped me there uh, with the. So we had dancing girls and, and all that. Uh, let me see who else. So we, well, well, you you made those uh, halftime shows at, you, uh, at Rocket football games as much fun as watching the game. That's right. <laughs> and that was the whole point. Except for you know the uh, a couple of years on, we had the wonderful football 
uh, there, there with, uh, forget the coaches. Frank Lauterbrunn. Oh, Frank Lauterbrunn. Just Chuck terrific. Lee, the quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, great teams. I mean, we'd win a ball game with thousands of people would stay if we'd do a concert. We'd play After some the of uh, the pop tunes, and we had a good arranger in Steve Wurstel. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> so, therefore, it was the arrangements and good people uh, in the band. And the, these people went on to teach at universities. Uh, Jimmy Riggs went down to teach at uh, North Texas State, mm -hmm. which became one of the best jazz schools in the, in the country. Yeah, that has to be, I would imagine, one of the most prideful things about your career is that the people you taught go on to become successful musicians or successful teachers in their own right. That's that right? right. To see these people go on and be successful has to be very rewarding for you. Well, this is kind of cute. Uh, he was never a student. Well, yes, he was in the shows that way. Uh, Bud Kerwin uh -huh. uh, went on to Butler University, and and he he's been there, for, still there. In fact, this My last goodness. basketball season, he taught the basketball team stage movement. He actually a class with the. Uh, basketball team to help them be better basketball players that's right oh. S uh, stage movement and movement on the uh, uh basketball court i never heard of such a and thing. but is still there in fact this last basketball season was uh, contracted to work with the team he must be pretty good at it because oh. butler's got an excellent basketball team <laughs> Uh, during your years at UT, you became you joined a, uh, I believe, a woodwind trio. Yeah. Remember that? You were a, a bassoon player. There's no room for error, is there, in a small ensemble like that? No, you guys better be in tune with each other. That, that's right, and they enjoyed that, you know, with a good, good flute player, good bassoon player, uh, good clarinet player. And so I enjoyed that very much. I learned so much uh -huh. with... You know, along the way, this is funny, we hardly talked about it. it was I was put into the situations where I had to learn. For example, in, in high school, I had to learn the Stan Kenton uh, music. Mm -hmm. You know, I learned all the artistry and this and artistry and that, all the things that became recordings with Stan Kenton. And then... Uh, when I went to Michigan, I was put in situations where you had to do, you know, it was like I didn't take a course in that, but I had the the background and uh, the musical ability mm -hmm. to do that. You'd absorbed a lot of that, yeah. that's for sure. Uh, now, in 1973, Sam, you remember you left UT in 1973. Yeah. And this had to be something. You became musical director at your alma mater. Wait High School. That's right. You get to go back to Wait. You get to go back to the East Side. That had to be gratifying for you. Well, what was gratifying was the salary compared to what I was making at the University of Toledo. You actually made more going back to high school. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Much more. <laughs> okay. Uh, it was enticing to go back. I was to go. And not knowing what was going to happen there. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden... I had to produce, so I went at all my skills in teaching, yeah. and went at that, and then uh, uh, we did. Well, anyway, there, I. Uh, well, uh, what did I do there? Uh, well, I'll tell you one thing: you did there uh, back at Wait. You brought a lot of theatrics to your band productions and halftime shows, just as you had done at UT. Yeah, that's right. Well, you once had the weight band dress in costumes to perform the musical Cats. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Choreography was part of the show for you, wasn't it? And the costumes the and costumes. the face, the makeup, and everything was there. I would imagine the kids really enjoyed that. Oh, they loved it. I mean, they loved coming to class. <laughs> in fact, well, you won't believe they this. They went to class in their Cats costumes? Oh no, no! no. <laughs> I mean, that, that was just for the uh, for the show for the show, and uh, you know, I can't tell you what shows we did, but it was kind of uh, 
Oh, here it is. We did a Disney show mm -hmm. where we would dress like the Disney characters, and we did, uh, thanks to Bud Kerwin, all the stage movement with the band. We did Blues Brothers, the entire band dressed as blues. <laughs> we played all the blues tunes. <laughs> and then we did a tap dance show on the football field. Every kid in the band learned tap dance for about three quarters of a year. Uh -huh. Learn how to tap. And that was giving mace, given Mesa night. That was two foot by uh, three foot. And it had a handle on it that they carry could it carry out onto the field. the field. And then we had a formation that we made, uh -huh. just kind of a concert formation. And the kids learned to tap. And what it was is they had their horns. They would tap E, side, west, side, over all the town, and then play. They would then play. So they played the, the tunes and they tapped. And every kid had to know how to tap. So uh, that was kind of exciting. Had to for be the world's only tap dancing marching band. On a football field. On a football field. That's or right. off a football that's field, right. for that that's matter. That's right. Uh, that, that sort of boundless energy kind of defines you, Sam. Uh, you're obviously a wonderfully talented musician and conductor, but there's a lot of showman. A lot of showman in you, isn't there? Give well, the crowd what they want. Exactly. And, and, and relying on what was done on Broadway mm -hmm. or what was done in movies, you know, with the Disney and with the, uh, with whatever. Uh, now, for example, when I went with the, uh, the music in New York City, uh, we didn't do any of the shows with the Goldman Band in costume. Now, in some of those shows, I would dress as John Philip Sousa I was going to, to ask conduct, you about that. And I'd have uh, a vocalist with me. My wife did that in Flint, Michigan. Uh, she did the uh, uh, Flint uh, the Sousa show. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was successful. The crowd loved it. Oh, yeah. So there was all, always that element of showbiz there. Exactly. And not just at Wait, but over the years, of course, with Music Under the Stars, uh, in fact, I once I saw a tape of you with a boa constrictor on stage. Th that was at the zoo. The zoo would at bring zoo? out uh, Joe Biznet would bring out a boa, or well, he wouldn't do it. Whoever the trainer was uh -huh. would bring it, and they would wrap that around my white coat and tails. The boa. And You're let me a better tell man you. than I, Sam Zor. Uh huh. Uh, of course, you never knew what you, who. Who your accompanist was going to be? Some, uh, I believe, one time they trotted out three elephants to play drums. Exactly, and also I have some artwork of one of the elephants in, in my basement, where the uh, elephant actually painted some, uh, you know, uh, on on canvas. Sounds like some pretty talented musicians in cages out there. Oh yeah, let me tell you, <laughs> an artist, yeah. And, of course, you were always noted for your brightly colored sport jackets that you wore to the Music Under the Stars concerts. Uh, where'd you get all those? The, the, that was a period. It was during the, uh, uh, oh, what period of music? Uh, a period I'd rather than I go back to. <laughs> I've never had that at all. But uh, uh -huh. my wife would sew the jackets which were just very colorful. Yeah, I saw and, some of those. I remember yeah. them. Now, the story is told, as long as we're talking wardrobe here, uh, that for decades you wore the same pair of shoes to your concerts. Is that right? you remember that? Well, I read that of you, that you wore the same pair of shoes for years. Uh, well, I don't know if you were black... superstitious or what. No, no. It was <laughs> not, not at all. It was uh, the black shoes with the white uh, or white coat in the black okay. tux pants. And I would just wear it because of that, or with the tuxedo, whenever I did the Messiah or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, I wore the black coat. Okay. Now, you, you divorced from, from uh, Marjorie in the early 70s, but you married your second wife, Judy. Judy. In 1975, and that's uh, a marriage that's still going strong. Oh, and yeah. She's your rock, isn't yeah. she? Yeah. Yeah. And she's my 
my nurse, with my illness, that I, I have an illness, but I've never known that I have it. But she was there whenever we go to the uh, oncologist. Um, she's right there. She'd say to him, no, that's not the medication or the agent that you should be, not that you should be, but remind him. So she's... How nice uh, to have a, a nurse in the family. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you retired from uh, high school teaching in 1983, and at that time you were just 53 years old. That seems young. Why? Was, was it difficult to walk away from high school teaching? What Was it time? No, I, well, I miss the kids in, in doing that, or the students, mm -hmm. but it was uh, getting on to being a conductor, and I was kind of tied into the symphony mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Bob Bell, Keith McWhorter, and all, so I got to do a lot of conducting. I conducted the uh, Sunday afternoon casual concerts at the Stranahan, mm -hmm. and, and for the sake of the symphony, we used to draw 2,200 people for a Sunday afternoon wow. concert. Mm -hmm. I did that for eight years, mm -hmm. and then I did a lot of guest conducting. You know, we would go to Water Valide, mm -hmm. not while, while the, that was with the high school band. We don't want to overlook your work with the Choral oh, Society. You were there no. half a century or more there with That's the Choral right. Society. I think I was there 49 years, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm still doing the Messiah. I'll be doing the Messiah December 3rd. That the, is an immense undertaking, isn't it, to do the Messiah? It is uh, well, quite, a, quite a production. Firstly, firstly, mm -hmm. I've done it so long yes. that, uh, and now I'll have to recall all of that, uh, which will take some doing. You know, I won't just go and conduct. And it's, a, then, it's a different set of challenges, isn't it, to conduct chorale or choral music as opposed to instrumentation, a band. It's a different set of challenges. Oh, sure. It's a different technique, of course. And then you have to get the sopranos singing in tune. That's always difficult. And the tenors singing in tune. If I was one of your tenors, it'd be impossible, not difficult. Uh, I'm <laughs> technique. <laughs> you, you could teach me? I, I might be beyond your help, I, I wonder. Uh, your affiliations are just so numerous, Sam. We talked about the Choral Society, we talked about the symphony, the concert band, uh, but you were director of music at the first congregational church Yes. for almost 40 years. I, 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 well, no, that was, I think, 49 was years it? Okay. there. And uh, before then, I had the... Uh, Broadway Methodist Choir for eight years, mm -hmm. and then I had the Euclid Methodist Choir for one year, With then went on to, and these were all good situations, and I loved that, and I, I got into choral music. In fact, my, my Tom can't, uh, well, uh, he spent a lot of time whenever he was in town. Mm -hmm. He went off to college elsewhere. But he, whenever he was at down, he was there, and he looks back at my uh, repertoire, the the books, and all the music. He can't believe it, <laughs> you know, that we did all that. Now, religious music was uh, very special for you, wasn't it? That it obviously appealed to you. you it was, you know, except for like the uh, fraternity choir in college, mm -hmm. the Phi Gam Choir. There, too, it was a religious piece that I did mm -hmm. and took second place in, in, with the... What was the, with, what was the appeal of that type of music to you? It was what was available and what was done. Mm -hmm. uh, f for example, we were talking about Kenny Holland. He uh, conducted, I'm sure, church choirs. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm sure he had... You know, I took over the Toledo Choral Society, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that he had a hand in conducting groups like that in Toledo, now too. Now, your connection to the Toledo Symphony is well established, and a lot of folks are, most of our people watching would be, be aware of that, but you also uh, were music director and conductor of the Perrysburg Symphony, The Symphony right? Orchestra. Uh, yeah, oh, that's when I left secondary school. Uh, 
I went and conducted that every Tuesday night for, maybe I mentioned that, uh, 20 years, mm -hmm. 20 uh, Tuesday nights. Wow. I was in Perrysburg at a church uh, rehearsing, mm -hmm. and we did a concert every year at St. Rose or wherever mm -hmm. in Perrysburg. But we were uh, active with symphonic music oh, yeah. there in orchestras. And in, down in Chiffin, Heidelberg? Well, I went to Heidelberg uh, uh, with the orchestra. Uh, that was short, uh, sort of mm -hmm. short-lived, but anyway, uh, I, I enjoyed that and enjoyed the people. Uh, some of the faculty people became very dear friends. In fact, uh, a woman who played cello, uh, Sharp Pope, is still one of our dear friends mm -hmm. from Tiffin. Oh, yeah. Now, Many awards have come your way over the years, Sam, and deservedly so. And we talked about one, and that was the opportunity you had to conduct the Edwin Franco Goldman Band in New York City. You spoke about that, and that was a wonderful tribute to you. Uh, and then in 1999, uh, you were singled out by the American Hungarian Foundation for its Abraham Lincoln Award, and that is a national award presented to distinguished Americans of Hungarian descent. That had to mean a lot to you. It did because of the background, with my uh, Hungarian mm -hmm. background. As a matter of fact, I should be introduced as Sir Sam Zor, but as Sir Samuel. There you go. I'm letting you pronounce it's that. Hungarian. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then in, a year later, in 2000, Woodward High School, where you had taught previously, so long ago, inducted you into its Hall of Fame. So Woodward obviously thought a lot of you as well. Well, you know, I had to... Uh, to learn my Polish, you know, to be accepted in that. Uh, before long, I, I was uh, a Pole, a Polish uh, person, and learned the language and, you know, learned wonderful things like, Dime Buzi Kohanka. That's Polish for give me a kiss, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you clarified yeah. that for us. Uh, and, and two years after that, uh, Sam, you. Uh, you were honored again by the whole city of Toledo with Sam Zor Day. That had to be humbling and, and, and very gratifying for you as well. Yeah, because that was my beginning with the city of Toledo, mm -hmm. Music Under the Stars. And I've known the folks there in the city council for years and years. You know, so I'm a Toledoan. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever imagine yourself, and you might have alluded to this a little bit earlier, <clears throat> Conducting somewhere other than in Toledo, did you? Was there ever a time when you would envision yourself at Carnegie Hall, for example, or at some of the great podiums across America? Uh, you said when you came back to Toledo, you weren't sure what was in Toledo for you. Did you harbor ambitions to go elsewhere? No. Uh, you know, I'm glad you said that because, you know, I never knew that I'd be at Wade High School, mm -hmm. and there. In 1947, we were state champs. We beat Maslin. I was I was drum major of the band. We went down to Maslin, beat them 40 to six. Back then, you didn't do that to Maslin. No. You know, so I had that background. Uh, we went to El Paso, Texas, mm -hmm. and played a Friday night ball game down there in El Paso. And so I was always a part of this greatness, mm -hmm. and I had to learn. You know, and I never dreamt of being the best high school band director, or never dreamt that I'd be uh, the best baton twirler at Michigan, <laughs> or that I would ever conduct a wonderful band mm -hmm. in Toledo, Ohio, yeah. never, or uh, in New York City. I just uh, did my job. And that all came about by hard work. Well, I know from attending Music Under the Stars performances for many years myself that it's always a, a fascinating program you put together. There's an eclectic mix of uh, patriotic marches, Broadway show tunes, sometimes the classics. How did you assemble a, a set list or how did you assemble a program for Music Under the Stars? What was your philosophy about choosing 
your songs. There it is. I was I spent uh, four years with Dr. Ravelli Amish. Mm -hmm. I was his librarian. I was in his library every day of four years undergrad at Mish. I went back to do graduate study in a three-year period, driving back to Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. But I uh, learned so much there, being a part of that University of Michigan band, that uh, it was part of me to know the band repertoire. In fact, I still. In fact, I've had uh, Dr. Ravelli down at a guest conductor at Music Under the Stars four years, four seasons. So you know, I just acquired that taste, and then being in the symphony, just being aware of what was going on. And you, <clears throat> I suppose you learn from your audience too about oh, yeah. what they react to. You know, I, for example, if. Uh, uh, you know, when I conduct now, uh, I hear the rock and roll tunes. And let me tell you, I stay away with uh, away from most of those. <laughs> we do some of the tunes that are, uh, uh, for example, a friend like me, a pop tune. We'll play that, or uh, you know, I evaluate what tune we should do, and. Uh, you know, I don't recall that we did any Blues Brothers. Did you let the musicians uh, nominate songs for your performances and listen to their recommendations? No, never nominate. They suggest, and many of them are wonderful suggestions, mm -hmm. you know, of what we should do. And, uh, and we have a wonderful orchestra in town. Yes, we do. You know, and so if there are suggestions... You know, I evaluate what it was all about say. making sure the audience had a good time. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's 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 what it comes down to, isn't it? That's right. Hey, not a not a happy time, you know, like that it's rewarding to them mm -hmm. and it's beneficial to them, uh, you know? and maybe challenges them a little bit occasionally. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. Um, maybe this is related to the showmanship, but how important is ego to a conductor? <laughs> you know, with our dialogue today, if the truth be known, I never knew I had an ego. I'm not aware of ego. Mm -hmm. That was never important to me okay. to be whatever, the best. Never. Mm -hmm. I Ever in the whatever I did. For example, when, when we did the Broadway shows, to be better than that. No, we just did it. We did a job. And uh, mm -hmm. it was never to be important. Mm -hmm. Or to get the awards to be Mr. Toledo. <laughs> you know, I kind of chuckle at that. Mr. But, Music. Indeed. Oh, yeah. But I'm happy for that, mm -hmm. that it did happen. Mm -hmm. Now, the concert band is uh, the Toledo Concert Band, known by its players often as simply the Zoo Band. Mm -hmm. And you have alumni who, travel, who move on and go all over the world and play elsewhere, but they're forever alumni. Uh, of the zoo band. That's a common bond they share forever, isn't it? You must have a lot of them scattered around uh, oh, yeah. the world. And, and we had uh, wonderful musicians to start with. For example, my arranger at the first Music Under Stars with the, the lighter tunes was uh, Jerry Billick mm -hmm. from Ann Arbor, who le left Michigan, uh, University of Michigan, and then went to Hollywood and, and work there. So uh, we are known all over the country. Oh, yeah. You now, you've had a lifetime of conducting, and you must have had a few moments here and there, Sam, where things didn't go according to plan or something went wrong. Can you recall an embarrassing moment on stage where things didn't go quite right? Uh, not really. Uh, for example, Music Under Stars, uh, well, we were paid to do a rehearsal, okay. and you you made things proper for whatever, and then you did some pray praying to the Lord. So practice and prayer got you through. Oh, it. that's right. Oh, yeah. Uh, I need to ask you about your uh, your long friendship uh, with a man who's been with you so long for music under the stars and the Toledo Concert Band, and that's Gordon Ward. Uh, he's been your announcer for so many years. Can you talk about that friendship with Gordon, with that, that relationship? 
a little bit. You mean Skip Ward? Skip Ward, as we oh, call those yeah. of us who you know. We, uh, in fact, Skip sat in that very chair not long ago, and we had a long conversation with him. What does that friendship mean to you? Well, number one, he's warm. He's a Christian. And uh, his background is just amazing. He's from Lorraine, Elyria, th that th background in yeah. Ohio. So he's in Ohio, was very close to the Cleveland scene, mm -hmm. and uh, professionally, I'm sure. And then we took him on because he had all the moves for whatever we wanted, and he can add so much. We have a script mm -hmm. that's given to me after I give him the information. And then he plays on that, and he is just so wonderful. And so making... much a part of Music Under the Stars, oh, it, along yeah, with the players uh... and, and yourself, of course. Uh, um, speaking of which, I still remember the night, and you, I think of you as a prankster, too, a guy who loves a good joke. Oh, yes. Uh, you tricked me, Sam Zor. Uh -huh. uh, I was invited to come to a concert at the zoo, uh, and I was told that I was to present Gordon Ward with some sort of a certificate or an award of some sort, which I was happy to do. And as I finish my remarks and present the award, you hand me the baton and uh -huh. walk off the stage and say, here, I need a break. And as it so happened, the next song was the Toledo Blade March. And there I am in front of all these players. And you've left the stage. What am I supposed to do? Somehow we got through it, but you set me up, Sam. Uh, yeah, but it was coming. Number one, uh, I have a, this uh, talent for uh, realizing uh, talented people, and I knew that you could conduct. I can wave my arm. That's about all it amounted to. <laughs> That's all I do. <laughs> That band was on automatic pilot, Sam. That's right. they, they didn't that's, need my help. Uh, that's right. And uh, and then uh, the respect for Gordon Ward mm -hmm. was there with his background. Yeah. And he just is, and he still is our conductor. He just is one of Toledo's great. Oh, absolutely he is. Well, uh, Music Under the Stars has been going on for so long. You've got second generation, even third generation families coming to the zoo mm -hmm. for your concerts. Can you put into words what that longevity, what seeing second and third generation children at your performances, what that means to you? Well, especially, well, the family, you know, like the, the spouse, uh, you know, the husband or wife or family people there. Well, then, then family, to have the young people there, young people being the young married people, and uh, then their children, and then their children's children. Mm -hmm. And over the years, that just been a constant flow of, of talent there. And, you know, up until uh, the, the hot, for example, to do a concert this past summer with the heat oh. would have been impossible. Mm -hmm. And you can tell because when the crowd comes to the concert, if it's hot and sunny, most of the crowd sit on the west side of the the audience there, and then as the the uh, evening goes on, Sun they goes. move towards center. And by the end, fewer people on the uh, yeah. left hand side. But yeah. it's so much to us to have family there, uh, and. Uh, and I hope that never stopped, especially with the symphony mm -hmm. that they passed this on. But there, the, the, I'm sure the families have moved on to elsewhere, yeah. you know. And I hope that doesn't happen happen with the music in mm -hmm. Toledo. Now, you, you, uh, we didn't talk about this yet, but you battled a serious illness a few years ago, didn't you, Sam? Uh, uh, you needed chemotherapy, but you fought back. You fought through it, and it must have been a special feeling for you to get back out there on the podium conduct the band again after that well you know I, I came down should I mention the illness mm -hmm. okay uh, Lou, uh, chronic chronic leukemia mm -hmm. and I went with a doctor and I didn't realize at the time he was Hungarian <laughs> Dr. Dr. Orban and uh, 
and he he can't speak Hungarian, but he is uh, Hungarian true and true, and he uh, has gone with the different agents in chemo, and it's just been wonderful. I've never really been sick, mm-hmm. you know, where I'm ill. Well, that's great. Yeah, which is a blessing, mm-hmm. and thank God for Judy because. You know, if the uh, doctor makes error and says, "Well, you should," you got do... a second opinion, right? At home, exactly. <laughs> Ju- Judy's been marvelous. Have you ever pondered, Sam, what you would have become had you not embraced a career in music? What What would you have done? Have you ever thought about that? Seriously, I'd rather not. I'd rather not. Uh, it was be- because I had the verbal and the knowledge to do music, it was an easy avenue to go down. And uh, I I couldn't actually think of myself as, I no, I don't want to name any other profession, but uh, going to be uh, whatever. i got to tell you, I'm sure everyone who's watching us, and certainly myself, I, I can't imagine you at, doing anything else. Uh-huh. You are indeed Mr. Music in Toledo. Uh, you once described yourself, Sam, as just the hired help. And I think your fans would insist that you are a great deal more than that. So, Sam, thanks so much uh, for the gift of your time today. Some continued success and, and good, our good wishes go with you. And, Tom, you're a blessing. Thank, well, thank you. Thank you for being with us and thank you for visiting the Toledo-Lucas County Public Library's Sight and Sound Video Archives.